The Dick Van Dyke Show. as soon as we finish breakfast. This is going to be some tough show to write this week. Yeah, but it's a nice change working at your house instead of the office. Hey, darling, I forgot to give you this letter. It looks important. Marked official business from the federal building. Oh, thanks, honey. Aren't you going to open it? No. I don't want to be nosy, but how can you just sit there and not open the letter? Anything marked federal building is bound to be bad news. Now, why should I open it and spoil my whole breakfast? Rob, how can you eat with that letter practically begging to be opened? That's his privilege. He don't ever have to open it. He can burn it if he wants to. Rob, I think it makes good sense not to spoil your appetite with some bad news. Thank you, buddy. It's all right. Will you please, please open, open the letter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I believe I'll have some more locks. Rob, I can't stand it. Honey, if you want to open this letter, you go right ahead and open it, but don't tell me what's in it. Open it, open it. What's it say? Wait till you finish your breakfast, dear. I'm finished with my breakfast. You know that? <laughs> jury duty. Hey, I've been called to go on jury duty. Darling, will you have time to serve on a jury? Oh, boy, I don't know. We've got an impossibly tough script to write this week, and I think I'll take time. Oh, no, you're not going to leave me to write that script alone. What do you mean alone? I'll be there with you. Oh, no, you're not going to leave me to write that script alone. You know, I wouldn't mind serving on jury duty. That's a drag. I've done it. Served for three weeks, wound up with a hung jury. Let the guy go and hung the jury. <laughs> That's pretty bad. No, sir. You know, I think it's my duty to go serve on that jury. You know what's happening? There's too much shirking or responsibility going on in this country. Here, here, here. Yeah. Right. It's everybody's responsibility to help uphold the democratic way of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After all, when the army called me to serve, didn't I go? Yes, you yeah, did. Yeah, da 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 dum ta dum <laughs> Now that this big government asked me to do this small favor for them, I think I should serve. Yeah. And do you know why? Yeah, because you want to get out of writing next week's script. That's right. <laughs> oh, this looks like it. Excuse me. I don't see Rob. I wonder where he is. Oh, he's probably still in his dressing room backstage. <laughs> oh, whatever they have like that. <laughs> I didn't tell him we were coming. I thought it might make him nervous. You know, I have the feeling Rob always wanted to be a lawyer. So he's a comedy writer. It's practically the same thing. <laughs> Listen, buddy's waiting for me at the office. I can't stay too long. Maybe six or seven hours at the most. Oh. <laughs> I've never been in a courtroom before. This is very exciting. Yeah, it's like watching the Defenders without a TV set. <laughs> I suppose there'll be a lot of I objects and inconsequentials and things like that. Oh, I'm sure there will be. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. I didn't get a program. <laughs> Mr. Berger, are you sure everything's going to be all right? Well, my dear, they couldn't possibly find you guilty. There are too many men on the jury. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Oh, here they come. You better sit down. Oh. I want to talk to the court reporter. Uh, oh, oh, dear. Uh. <laughs> oh, I, I... Oh, I, I, uh, I believe this is yours, ma'am. Uh, Miss. Yes. Oh, my, what a lovely suit. Oh, thank you very much. Are you on the jury? Uh, yes, yes, I, I, I'm on the jury. Yes. Isn't that nice? Well, I guess we'll be seeing a lot of each other. Well, I don't uh, believe I saw you in the jury room. That's because I'm not on the jury. Oh, I see. <laughs> you couldn't be the uh, district attorney. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Uh, oh. oh! We're not supposed to be doing this. Doing what? 
talking and picking each other's lipstick. Here, you're, you're, uh, uh, good thank luck. Thank you. Oh, the same to you. Yeah. <laughs> My first time on the jury. Oh. <laughs> Courtroom will please rise. Hear ye, hear ye. This Honorable United States District Court is now in session. The Honorable George M. Tyler presiding. Please be seated. The United States of America versus Marla Hendricks. The charge? Attempting to smuggle diamonds into the United States. Mr. United States Attorney, you may proceed. Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the government intends to prove that the defendant, Marla Hendricks, did willfully attempt to smuggle diamonds into the port of New York to avoid payment of duty. You may step down. Is the defense ready to present its case? We are, Your Honor. I'd like to call the defendant, Miss Marla Hendricks, to the stand, please. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Please raise your right hand. Uh, well, oh, would, would you mind holding this for me? <laughs> you just want to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to the best of your ability? I certainly do. Take this down. Oh. You, oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Your name, please. Well, everybody knows it. You just said it, and, and he just said it, and it's been in all the papers. <laughs> just for the record, please. Okay. It's Marla Hendricks. <laughs> Occupation? Uh, exotic dancer. I used to be in an act called the Harem Girls and Buster. <laughs> Buster kept promising me a specialty, but he never gave it to me. I object. So did I. <laughs> That's why I left the act and came home to New York. Miss Hendricks, just answer the questions. Well, you, you don't blame me, do you? After all, a promise is a promise, and my mother worked very hard in my costumes. Those zippers are hard to put in. If you don't put them in just right, they stick. <laughs> well, that's very interesting, Miss Hendricks, but now, do you know a Mr. Clark? I certainly do. And how did you meet him? I picked him up on the ship. <laughs> you don't mean that, do you? Objection, Your Honor. Counsel is attempting to coach the defendant. Well, now, Your Honor, this is just a matter of semantics. Uh, may I be permitted to have the client clarify? Well, I'd be anxious to have you try. Now, <laughs> now, Miss Hendricks, this, um, this Mr. Clark, you, uh, you say you picked him up? Well, sure. I knocked him down, playing shuffleboard. So, so why shouldn't I pick him up? Even though I'm a lady, I'm still a gentleman. Order in the court. Now, tell me, Miss uh, Miss Hendricks, did did Mr. Clark ever ask a favor of you? Yes. Yes, he asked me to wear this necklace. He said it was just costume jewelry that belonged to his dear departed mother who had died. You see, his ex-wife, who was a real witch, was trying to attach everything he had, and he wanted to save this necklace for sentimental reasons. <laughs> I love sentiment, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to meet Mr. Clark later. Where? At his apartment at uh, 485 Linden Street. <laughs> I believed him. Wouldn't you? <laughs> How was I to know what kind of a man he was? Objection, Your Honor. Defendant is attempting to carry on a personal conversation with the foreman of the jury. Uh, <laughs> objection, sister. <laughs> Just answer the question, Miss Hendricks. You may proceed. Now, Miss Hendricks, you had no idea that you were carrying in diamonds. Why, of course not. How could I? 
I thought it was just sentimental junk jewelry. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Hendricks. No further questions. Your witness, Mr. Mason. Thank you, Mr. Berger. <laughs> Now, Miss Hendricks, you've seen this necklace before. What are you doing with those? They're Mr. Clark's dead mother's. I think he's got some explaining to do. <laughs> so the last time you saw these diamonds is when you willfully attempted to smuggle them into the country. Objection. Sustained. Miss Hendricks, you want us to believe that a girl of your <laughs> sophistication would mistake these priceless diamonds for common costume jewelry? You really want us to believe that? Of course I do. I'd be some nut not to want you to. <laughs> hey, Miss Hendricks, isn't it true that this so-called Mr. Clark wasn't really a total stranger at all? As a matter of fact, isn't it true that he was a very close personal friend? Isn't it also true that this Mr. Clark might be called your lover? Oh! Miss Hendricks, the prosecuting attorney asked you a question. I'm not talking to him. <laughs> Miss Hendricks! <laughs> Order in the court. You please restate the question, Mr. Mason. Isn't it true that this no, Mr. Clark... No, it is not true. Mr. Clark was not my lover. I would never have a boyfriend like Mr. Clark. He's too short. <laughs> I like tall men. I <laughs> Basketball players. <laughs> Miss Hendricks, if there was no Mr. Clark listed in the ship's register, how do you count for that? How should I know? Perhaps because there was no Mr. Clark. <gasps> oh. Oh. I'll come back when you're finished. <laughs> Mr. Foreman. Please remember this is a court of law and not a gymnasium. Yes, thank you very oh, much. That, that lovely oh, suit. <laughs> Personally address the jury. <laughs> Court declares a fifteen minute recess. Honey, I'm home. Darling, how are you? I'm fine, fine. Did you hurt yourself? W w when? When you fell out of the jury box because you were gawking at Marla Hendricks. Oh, my God. Was that on television? No, it wasn't on television, but you did put on quite a show. You were in the courtroom today. Mm-hmm. What? Now, honey, now, wait a minute. Now, wait. I can explain nothing. I can explain. <laughs> well, sit, sit down, honey. Now, wait. Sit down. Now, honey, look. First of all, there were 11 other jurors in that box. And none of them fell out. <laughs> I was the only one. Well, I'm the foreman. Oh, of course. <laughs> the foreman always falls out. <laughs> Rob, why did you ogle her that way? Now, honey, what was the matter with the way I ogled her? I, I didn't ogle her. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just watching her testimony. Watching? <laughs> Honey, I'm, if, if I didn't know you better, I'd say you're acting jealous. I am not acting, and you don't know me as better as you think. What? <laughs> Never mind. Rob, why did you look at her that way? What way? You know what way. Well, honey, I, di I didn't look at her any differently. I look at a hundred other women. Wait, I don't mean that. <laughs> now, look, the, the defendant was an interesting-looking girl. And now, all men look at interesting-looking girls, honey. It's just natural. Are you coming to court tomorrow? No. Good. <laughs> and I don't think you ought to either. What? I think you ought to resign. 
Resign? Well, resign or secede or whatever it is you do to quit a jury. Well, now, why should I quit? Because you're not capable of judging this case fairly. You're prejudiced. You're being blinded by statistics. Well, statistics? Yes, 36, 24, 36. <laughs> yeah. You ask me, there's nothing to discuss. She's guilty. I feel sorry for the poor dear. Now, why did she have to do a thing like that? You know, she reminds me of a niece of mine who ran away to California. Why is it that some girls are born to get in trouble? I don't know. No, all right, uh, 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 enough of this yakking. She's guilty. Let's vote, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's vote and get out of here. I don't know what I'm doing here in the first place. Nine million people in New York, they gotta pick me. My brother-in-law, Sidney, he's driving my cab. He's probably stealing me blind. <laughs> Look, let's put her away before he bends the cab. She's guilty. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, folks, don't you think we're being a little bit hasty here? A little. All right, pass him down. You've got him on that side. Pass him down, please. All right. Yeah, I got, I got guilty, right. guilty, 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 five guilty. Guilty, 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 guilty. Not guilty. All right. Who's the wise guy? <laughs> very sympathetic person. But if a girl does something wrong, she's got to pay for it, right? Right. Right. She's guilty. One of us here voted her innocent. Now, who was it? Well, I, I think that uh, uh, who is unimportant here. I, <laughs> since, uh, since one of us does disagree, uh, why don't we review the, the facts of the case? Oh, my poor cat. Uh, <laughs> wait, the longer we wait, the harder it is on that poor dear girl. So let's be kind to her and get her convicted right away. Right? Yes. So, well, well, folks, sometimes things aren't as obvious as they seem. Now, all we really know about that girl is she got off the ship thinking she was wearing costume jewelry. Now, if she was a professional smuggler, don't you think she would have done something more clever than that? Wait a minute. You're the one voted her innocent. Oh, please. He's the one. Mr. Petrie, I know you feel sorry for that girl, and so do I. But if you really want to be kind to her, put her behind bars. So, well, now, look, I know I may be wrong, but there's such a thing as intuition. I, I got a feeling about this girl. I'll say you have. We saw the way you were looking at her during the trial. What's going on here, huh? Nothing's going on. Well, wait a minute. Weren't you two in back of my cab once? I think I picked them up by the Peppermint Lounge. A uh, Peppermint Lounge, look. If you're in love with the girl, good. I think it's beautiful. Wait for her. I'll tell you. Let's vote. The sooner she goes to jail, the sooner they'll be together. That's what I'm saying. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm already together. I'm a married man. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Forget it. Well, oh, forget it. For, forget the whole thing. All I'm saying is we haven't even discussed the facts in the case. Now, at least, let's at least look at the evidence in the trial. I'll, I'll call for a transcript of the case. Transcript? Oh, How do you like that? Nine million people in New York. I got to be on the same jury with Clarence Darrow. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> this in your life? <laughs> Eleven hours. Eleven hours! I never saw such a stubborn foreman. <laughs> Look, we're not making a movie here, Mr. Henry Fonda. <laughs> we'll make a deal with you. Vote guilty and we'll ask the judge to put her into your custody. <laughs> You can adopt her. <laughs> Mr. Patry, did it ever occur to you that that so-called intuition of yours could be wrong? It's not. Uh, nah. One question, Mr. Petry, please. Just one question. Are you a mother? No. Uh-huh. Well, I am a mother. And believe me, a mother's intuition is better than a tall, skinny comedy writer. <laughs> anytime. Anytime. I don't even like a show. <laughs> show. That's it. In front of the television studio. That's where I picked him up. Him and that smuggler. Look, I tell you, that girl is innocent. I know it. And I'm not going to be responsible for sending an innocent girl up the river. You're never going to change your vote, are you? I'm not going to vote guilty as long as there's still a shadow of a doubt. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Ted Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Just you and your shadow. Is everybody happy? 
Someplace else, but not here. Well, as long as that shadow's with me, I'll stay here forever. Folks, we might as well face it. That's it. We're deadlocked. 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 Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, I hope you're very proud of yourself. I am. Let's go report our verdict to the defendant and to the other uh, uh, duly elected officials. <laughs> Uh, Alan comes out and he says, look, for, for this big punch, he says, put the breakfast in my hat and I'll eat it on the way to work. <laughs> or maybe, uh, maybe someone, uh, maybe, you know, I Well, here it is in the evening paper, jury dismissed. How could 12 supposedly intelligent people all disagree? She was obviously guilty. Wait a minute, I voted her innocent and I wasn't even on the jury. <laughs> hey, Rob, what was the vote? Men innocent, women guilty? No, for your information, a lot of the men voted guilty. How many? Well, honey, what difference does it make how many? Do we have any more coffee? Rob, your cup is full. Oh, how about that? Well? Well, what? How many men voted her guilty? I uh, forgot, honey. All right, then how many men voted her innocent? Uh, well? That is, besides you. Well, let's see, there was me. And there was, there was a, a, a cab driver there. He voted not guilty? Well, not exactly. He voted uh, guilty? Well, uh, yeah, uh, something like that, honey. I don't remember all the details of it, anyway. Uh, the telephone is ringing, Mrs. D.A. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Miss Hendricks. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> yes, I'm Mrs. Petrie. Oh, if it weren't for my husband alone, you'd be in jail? Eleven to one. Lousy odds. Well, no, don't thank me. He's the one you should thank. Just a minute, I'll get him. It's your defendant, darling. Marla Hendricks. Yes, thank you, honey. Gee, I wonder what she wants. <laughs> Hello, yes, Miss Hendricks. This is quite a surprise. Yeah. No, no, you're not. You're not uh, disturbing me. I'm just uh, chatting with a few friends. <laughs> and my wife. <laughs> what? No. What? <laughs> What's silly? I... <laughs> okay. A uh, gray suit with a black tie. <laughs> she, she likes the way I dress. I'm so happy for you. Uh, <laughs> Miss uh, Miss Hendricks, why did you why did you call? Well, listen, no thanks are necessary. I, I just thought you were innocent, that's all. Uh, you, you were innocent, weren't you? <laughs> no, I didn't. When? Oh, well, I, I appreciate your call and tell me, Miss Hendricks. You're, you're quite welcome. Yes, goodbye. Uh, uh, have a nice trip. <clears throat> uh, she's uh, going away. What a shame. <laughs> we, uh, we missed the evening newscast. How about that? I wondered why the evening seemed so empty. <laughs> Rob, are you going to tell us what was in that newscast, or do we have to wait for the morning paper? Well, Marla Hendricks has been proven innocent. How? Well, uh, she, it seems she made a teensy-weensy little mistake in her testimony. You remember Mr. Clark of 45 Linden Street? Uh -huh. A guy was supposed to have given her the jewelry. That's right. Yeah. She suddenly remembered that Mr. Clark of 485 Linden Street was Mr. Linden of 485 Clark Street. Oh. And the police went and checked up on her story, and they found him. Oh. And that was about all the news she had, except that she was going back with Buster and the Harem Girls, if she can remember what country they're in. <laughs> well, friends, don't you think maybe a few apologies are in order here? Yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. Hey, come on, you guys. Well, that's all you deserve. Yeah, well, you're probably right, honey. You know, I did prove one thing, though, that when it comes to voluptuous, beautiful, gorgeous women, the instinct of a skinny comedy writer is better than that of a mother. <laughs> you can say that again. If he does, I'll kill him. When it comes to beautiful, gorgeous, voluptuous women... Robert Simpson, Petrie, don't you? Oh, 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 oh,